Hi everyone, spoiler alert. Time is running out for your squash. Pretty soon it's gonna die. The days are getting shorter, the nights are getting colder, but today I'm gonna to share with you a few more tricks to get a few more squash before it reaches the end of its life. Now this late in the season, you might not get a ton of more harvest out of your squash, but you can definitely get a few more with the tricks I'm gonna show you today. Trick number one, prune. Squash doesn't need any leaves below the first set of squash or the first set of flowers. Take the old, diseased, dying leaves off to redirect more energy into squash production. Got baby squash and flowers right here, so all the leaves below that are going to come off. Got my gloves because squash leaves are prickery. Got my sharp pair of pruners. We're going to start cutting over here at the stem all the branches below that first set of squash and flowers. Now something about squash leaves I want to show you is if you cut up here on the squash leaf or the squash branch you can see it's hollow here so you don't want to do that. What you want to do is cut as close to the stem as possible because when you leave a hollow little branch here it's easier for bugs and disease to affect the squash plant. But closer to the stem See how solid that is? You're going to have much less chance of introducing disease to your squash plants. Little trick. So we're going to go ahead and take all these off to give our squash plant a lot more energy to produce the squash. So it's going to give a lot more airflow to your plant, which helps reduce the chance that you're going to get late season powdery mildew on your squash plant. Just keeps it healthier. You do want to be really careful that you don't cut the main stem when you're doing this. It feels so good to get all these old leaves off. Now your squash will wilt as you prune it. Not to worry, it's going to perk up in a couple of days, especially when we do trick number two, which is feeding your plants. At this point in the growing season, it's expended a lot of energy into producing squash. So we need to give it some more food to perk it up and give it more energy to produce more squash. First, we're going to put some compost at the base of the plant. This is compost I made here in my own garden. I spread some around the base. Kind of scratch it in for a nice little nutrient dose. Compost will feed your plants over the next month or so. Now we want to give it a quick hit, of some water soluble fertilizer that'll feed your plants right away. And we're going to use the Vermistera Vitality, my favorite go-to, really keeps the plants healthy, which will really help here with the end of the season disease that always tends to creep in. So put some here in the watering can. And then we're going to water in the compost with the Vermistera Vitality. And this will really help your plant, your squash plant, perk up here and start to produce more fruit. Give it a nice deep soaking. Trick number three is pest and disease control. Now, I'm going to give it to you straight. At this late date in the growing season, almost all your squash plants will start to show signs of powdery mildew and bugs. The plants are a little weaker, more susceptible to that, and my squash plant here is no exception. I've definitely got some aphids here on my plant. And even just kind of bumping my plant here, there's little bugs that are flying around. You can see the green little aphids right here on the flower. There's some black bugs here, probably white flies of some kind. And we've also got teeny tiny little white aphids here crawling all over this brand new squash. We definitely don't want that. And also on the squash plant right next to it, you can see signs of powdery mildew, that white powdery looking substance on the plants, and even some teeny tiny little black bugs. I'm using Captain Jack's Neem Max. I really like this product because it's a four-in-one pest and disease control product, which means I don't have to use a lot of different sprays on my garden. I've used Bonide products for years. We're working together on this video. So what I'm gonna do is pour the concentrate in the spray bottle mixed with water. Another reason I really like Neem Max is not only does it control the disease, disrupts the life cycle of the chewing and sucking insects, but it also kills all stages of the insects, the eggs, the larva, and the adults. So I'm going to start by spraying the soil in case there's disease or insects that might be in the soil. Give it a nice little drench and then spray up the stem. And then I'm going to spray the leaves, the top of the leaves, the bottom of the leaves until it's dripping wet. I'm going to avoid the flowers 
And I always spray in the morning or in the evening, not in the heat of the day, and always do a test spray first. So instead of the plant having to fight off disease and pests, it can put all of its energy into producing you a few more squash before the end of the season. Trick number four to get a few more squash is to hand pollinate. Especially helpful this late in the season as the bee activity declines as the weather gets cooler. So let me show you a few squash on this plant that have not been pollinated properly and the squash isn't growing. You can see here these little baby squash are soft and mushy and just shriveling up. It means the bees didn't get to this to pollinate it. You do need to make sure you have both male and female flowers on your plant to hand pollinate. So you do need to know the difference between a male flower and a female flower. So here's a little female flower here. And we know this because at the end of the female flower is a swollen little baby fruit. So we're good with that one. And the male flower is right over here and it just has a stem attached to it, no little fruit at the bottom. First, what we're gonna do, it, typically you wanna do this in the morning when the flowers are open, but the flowers aren't open today, so we're gonna open it for them. Um, so you can use a couple little things to hand pollinate, either a little makeup brush or a Q-tip. I've got both here and I'm just gonna use a little Q-tip today and what I'm gonna do is open up the male flower I'm gonna collect some pollen from the center of the male flower with my Q-tip, just by rubbing it gently right here until we see a little bit of yellow pollen on the Q-tip. It's a tiny little bit right there. And we may need to do this a couple of times with a couple different flowers to make sure that pollination is successful. So we're gonna now go down here and open up the female flower. I'm gonna dab the pollen on the center of the female flower. So it'll kind of help the bees out and help that fruit start to grow. So you get some more squash. I'd really like to hear from you if this was helpful, if you tried any of these tricks, and if it helped you get a few more squash before the weather gets too cold. It's really gonna be fun to have those last few late season squash, especially with the high cost of groceries these days. Head over to CaliKimGardenAndHome.com. Today is the last day to grab your September Grow Your Groceries with Cali Kim subscription box. You definitely don't wanna miss this one. It's a good one. Get $9 off with the code FUNFALLGREENS and that ends today. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.